My guest was tormented nightly by demons, even as a believer, for a year. Nothing could stop this relentless assault until one night he did something that triggered the glory of God and the demons left in terror. Want to know why? Next. Welcome, Holy Spirit. This is totally your show. This is totally your platform. I yield completely to your promptings. William Wood was on drugs, it's hard to believe, William, at age 11, a full-blown alcoholic at 15. His belief system, atheism. He lived in and out of crack houses. Then it got worse. William, what happened at 20? Well, I overdosed uh, on drugs while walking down the side of the road. I had been up for five solid days on crystal meth without any sleep. And when I was overdosing, I actually fell into the highway and a car hit me, sideswiped me. And I probably slid, I don't know, 30 or 40 yards. And when I came back to, I was in a hospital room and there's a doctor standing over me and they said, William, your kidneys have completely failed and your liver is failing. Matter of fact, if your liver fails, you will die. And because of where I lived, it was a community of only about 2,000 people. The hospital wasn't necessarily equipped to handle my situation. And so they sent me to another hospital about two hours away. When I get there, they put me in ICU, put me on a kidney donor list. Now, keep in mind, I'm, I'm an atheist. I don't even believe in God. So I wasn't in there praying for God to touch me, praying for God to heal me, or anything like that. I was not crying out to Christ. And for two weeks, I'm in this intensive care. And every night before I went to sleep, I would have this thought, a hope I'll wake up to see the next day. That was the hope of my life at 20 years old. Mm. And this one night, I had I, that I have to ask you a question. Why were you an atheist? I, you know, being a Jew, it wasn't even in my realm of consciousness. Why were you an atheist? Well, it may be a little different than what you think. I, I grew up in Alabama, and there was a church on every single corner. But yet, I never remember meeting a Christian. Huh. Never even remember hearing the name Jesus spoken from anybody. And so well, I did is curse words. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The only time I did hear the word name God or anything like that would be in the context of a curse word. So for me as a, as a young boy, that kind of proved to me that God wasn't real. I was like, if God is real, then why doesn't His people live as if He's real? And I believe now, this is the reason I have a, a teaching series that I have, uh, it's called Christian Atheist. I think there's a lot of Christian atheists out there. In other words, they believe God exists, but live their life as if He isn't. And that's exactly where a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're laying in the hospital bed. You've gotten what appears to be a potential death sentence. Is that drawing you any closer to God? Well, well like I said, the only thing I'm looking for is just to live another day. Mm. That's the only thing I'm reaching for is just how can mm -hmm. I live another day? Well, I had this thought. I hope I wake up tomorrow. And sure enough, a bright light forms right in front of my hospital bed. Now, keep in mind, I've been on drugs for, for years at this point. Oh. So I was thinking I'm going back on another as, uh, trip on acid mm -hmm. or something like that, like a flashback. And, but this time, this, this, this visionary experience is different. It has an atmosphere to it, a presence to it. There was so much love coming from this light. And so I just began to look at this light and I'm focusing on it. And as I focus on it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it's like the size of a person. And then a figure of a man begins to walk toward me through this light. And he steps into this room. He has a white gown on, he has brown hair, but I could not make out the features of his face because of the brightness of the light that's coming from his face. And when he stands into the room, all my body begins to tremble like this under this power. And he begins to walk to the foot of my bed, not saying anything to me. And he gets right to the edge of the bed and he turns like he's going to leave. But yet he sits down on the floor. He crosses his hands like he's waiting for something. And within a few seconds, he looks over to the right side of the room. And so I look over and the wall opens up. And I'm seeing this as I see you. 
the wall opens up and a river of water begins to flow into the hospital room right in front of where this man is sitting. And he sticks his hands in the water, he washes his arms like this, and an audible voice speaks to me and says, the waters that you see will purify and cleanse you if you receive Jesus the Christ as Lord and Savior. That certainly wasn't a drug trip, that I can tell you. No, absolutely uh, not. So what did you do? Everything inside of me just responded with this yes. And so I scream out, yes. And as soon as I say that, everything in there disappears. The vision, whatever this is, it disappears. The power that was on my body, it goes inside of me. And I could literally feel my organs beginning to tremble with this power. Well, it gets so intense, it, it knocks me out. I don't wake up until the next day, about 12, 13 hours later. And when I wake up, the doctors are literally shaking me. They say, William, wake up, wake up. And when I come to, he said, we've been doing tests for 10 hours on you. Not only are your kidneys and liver better, but it's as if you've never done drugs before your whole life. <laughs> that is definitely not a drug uh, vision type of thing. That was God. So. Um, what happened to all your addiction, so? Well, at the time, I hadn't seen my dad in probably eight years at that time, a few times here and there. And I didn't have anybody else to turn to or to call, because, you know, when you live a life of drugs, you kind of burn all the bridges mm -hmm. in your life, you know? And so I called my father, he comes to get me. What I did not know at the time is that he got saved the month before, and he was an atheist. Hmm. And so when he picks me up, he begins the father-son conversation, and he says, you know what, when you get home, I help you uh, get a job, I help you get a home if you get off the drugs and everything. So we get to his house, three days go by, four days go by, and I realize there's no withdrawals from the drugs. I had been in and out of rehab all throughout my teenage uh, uh, years, and guess what? When withdrawals will begin, I'll fall right back into drugs. This time there was no withdrawals whatsoever from the drugs. So you get, you get a new liver, a new kidney, a new life, <laughs> You know that there is a God, and you're drug-free. Now, that's the God that I serve. I'll tell you what. 3 a.m. every morning, demons come into your bedroom for a year. Well, most believers say, well, just tell them to go and roll the sheet back over your head. Uh, but you did everything you could do, and you could not get free until you reached a certain point. What happened? Well, it was, it was, it was a really a funny thing how the Lord showed me this, because I kind of stumbled into it. And it was getting to that point after a year of going through this where these demonic spirits would manifest in my home. Sometimes they would come in a, as a black cloud. Sometimes they would manifest in human form. And a paralysis would begin at the bottom of my feet and work all the way up to the top of my head to up where I couldn't move. And so I was getting to this point of anger, like a righteous anger toward the enemy. Like, why am I continuing to tolerate this and why can I find breakthrough in this? Well, this one night I felt like the Lord told me to not go to sleep, but to, but to stay up and to wait until those demons would manifest and that He would show me what to do. Well, sure enough, there I am at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm waiting for, the, for those demons to manifest in the room. They come in in the form of a cloud, and immediately I have this thought. Grab a chair from your living room and put it in your bedroom and tell the demons to watch you worship Jesus. And so that's exactly what I did. I grabbed a chair, I set it in my, in my bedroom, and I looked to, to the cloud, to the, to the demonic uh, spirits, and I said, you sit here in this chair, and you're going to watch me worship Jesus in front of you. And from that, I realized... It what, was almost uh, like the anger Jesus had in the temple. It was a righteous indignation. That's exactly right. And one of the things I realized from that is what gives Satan's presence purpose is our attention. The entire time leading up to this, all I was doing was focusing on the devil. I wasn't focusing on Christ. Hmm. And so when I put the chair there and I turned my back, it was just instinctive of me to do this. I didn't realize what I was doing. I was basically taking my attention from the demonic and putting it on the person of Jesus Christ. And so I just began to worship. I began to magnify Jesus. I began to say, King of kings and Lord of lords, I lift you up. You are my redeemer. Now I just began to magnify him in my bedroom, and, and as a default of that, within five minutes, I turn around, 
the demon had materialized into human form, sitting there on the floor in, in a cowardly position in fear. And I realized this is the normal state or nature of a demonic in relation to me, in fear of me realizing who I am in Christ. You know, you, you, you have revelation knowledge that few do. And in your brand new book, Every Day of Victory, William teaches on how to have a decisive victory over the major tactics of the devil. Tell us two ways. Well, yes, uh, from this encounter, I was just blown away of the freedom that came to that. And so I began to study the scriptures kind of for a blueprint of how the demonic realm works. And I found in Genesis chapter 3, you look in the, in the, in the fall of man in that account, you'll notice that, that Adam and Eve didn't have a sin nature. They were not prone to sin. They were perfect in every aspect of the way. So how did they fall? How did the enemy entrap them in his bondage? Well, when you read through that account, you realize there's really two predominant ways that he comes against us, deception and temptation. Well, the power of deception is the ignorance of truth. Hmm. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people perish for a lack of knowledge. John chapter 8 verse 32 says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So by that context, the truth I don't know is what's keeping me bound. And the way that the enemy comes against truth is by introducing facts. You say every truth is a fact, but not every fact is a truth. Hmm. For instance, he may wait until you're sick and say, did God really say that by His wounds you are healed? Why are you sick? And say so He'll take something that's a fact to undermine truth. And the second way that He comes against us is temptation. We may be asking, well, how in the world could He tempt us? By projecting His own nature upon us. For instance, when a spirit of anxiety comes against us, the reason we experience anxiety is because that spirit itself is anxious is literally looking for my human agreement. And so what the demonic does, it finds its power in our agreement with what it projects upon us. So our words can open access to the devil has come to kill and destroy and rob, but God has come. God has come to give you peace, purpose, when we return, William will demonstrate the supernatural power of worship that set him free and drove the devil meshuggah. Uh, that's a Yiddish word that means nuts. <laughs> many, many of you are going to have major miracles. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get William Wood's brand new book, Every Day of Victory, Practical Weapons to Fight, Stand, and Live Free. Plus, get his exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, Eight Secrets to Spring into Victory. You will also get the Worship Warrior exclusive bonus CD, yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9903. With William's new book, audio CD series, and Worship Warrior bonus CD that you can only get here, you won't have to tolerate the devil anymore as you become fully equipped to do battle and win when Satan uses temptation and deception against you. Understand the seven critical truths that break you free and help you stay free. Walk in the authority of Jesus to resist the sinful nature the enemy projects on you. Defeat discouragement when Satan attacks your calling. Experience how standing on God's truth can change every everything for you by putting Satan under your feet. Learn to use worship as a powerful act of warfare in fighting back against evil forces. Receive impartational prayers and practical tools in the special Weapons for the Battle section at the end of each chapter of William's book that will make every day your day of victory. What you magnify, you create an environment for that kingdom to be present. And so as I begin to worship Jesus and I begin to magnify who He is, I didn't realize it, but all of heaven was coming into my bedroom and the demons cowering on the floor in fear of me realizing who I am 
in Christ. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get William Wood's brand new book, Every Day of Victory, Practical Weapons to Fight, Stand, and Live Free. Plus, get his exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, Eight Secrets to Spring into Victory. You will also get the exclusive Worship Warrior bonus CD that you can't get anywhere else. I believe God's going to activate some things in you. So Holy Spirit, right now, for every person that's watching, I ask that you will just manifest your goodness and your presence upon them in a very unique way where gifts will be activated, courage and boldness will come in Jesus' name. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9903 or send your check of $35 to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9903. We now return to It's Supernatural. We have a third guest, maybe a fourth guest, because we've invited the Holy Spirit to be with us. Uh, but our third guest is Chantel Wood, uh, uh, William's wife. And we had both of them at our prayer meeting yesterday. And she demonstrated a gift that few believers or non-believers have ever, ever seen. They didn't even know it was biblical. It is. And the fruit that I saw was so amazing. I wanted her to tell us a bit about this gift. When, I mean, you don't seem like that bold a person as I saw you at that prayer meeting. Are you? I'm just curious. I'm very quiet. That's what I thought. So if I was God, and I wanted to demonstrate a gift, she'd be the one I'd pick for this bold, trust me, bold gift. And some of the stories she has from this gift are absolutely phenomenal. Now, after she shares, William is going to share probably one of the most important things you're ever, ever going to learn, how to live a lifestyle of worship. We know we're supposed to worship, but how do you do it? He's going to demonstrate, and guess what? Have everyone at home and everyone in the studio audience, you're all included, practice what he teaches. And here's my promise to you. Your life will be totally transformed for the better. You want your life transformed for the better? I want my life transformed for the better when you start operating in this gift yourself. Now, Chantel's gift is different. Not everyone can do that. But William's gift, everyone can worship God. So, Chantel, you're a nice, quiet person. How in the world and what was this gift that happened? It happened about six years ago, and it came through honor. It came by honoring God, honoring the Holy Spirit, and honoring how He moved through me. And it was this shout that started coming through me. Just tell us a little biblical evidence of the shout. Absolutely, Sid. Well, in Isaiah 42, 13, it says, The Lord will go forth like a warrior. He will arouse his zeal like a man of war. He will utter a shout. Yes, he will raise a war cry. He will prevail against his enemies. And in Job 8, 21, it says, He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouting. <laughs> you know, that, by the way, there's a lot more, a lot more, but those are two good ones. But you know what's even more important? Is the, not, it's not important to fall or not fall. What is more important is what is the fruit of the biblical shout? What have you seen? Yes. Well, I've seen um, many different things come from this shout. I've seen impartation. I've seen healing. I've seen deliverance. I've been, I've seen, um, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah. And um, 
When we were in Colorado, I was praying over this gentleman and he came up for impartation. We were doing an impartation service and I put two fingers on his hand and he just went out with the Holy Spirit and I decreed breaker anointing and I shouted over him and started beginning to prophesy over him. And when I prophesied, I, I started uh, uh, shouting and shaking over him, prophesying that he would have a deliverance ministry. And this deliverance ministry would be a, a big thing for him later on. And he ministers in Africa. He sees witch doctors come to Jesus. He, he actually delivers witch doctors. And before he even left the conference, he started doing deliverance. So I'm gonna have her demonstrate this gift in a moment, but because of time constraints, we're going to do an extended segment as soon as we go off the air. And what I really want is, you, and, you, and William, you can start this. I want you to demonstrate the supernatural power of worship that sets you free from one year of being tormented by demons. I mean, every night. And when he demonstrates and teaches, many of you will be set free from demons, curses, emotional problems, physical diseases. Better yet, you will learn how to supernaturally worship the Lord and get the same results. But before William demonstrates and teaches you, I want to tell you there is even a greater gift, a greater miracle than anything we have talked about. And the greater gift is how God became man and dwelt among us, and God wants to be housed inside of you. He wants your body to be his new temple, his new tabernacle. He wants you to know him, hear his voice. Everything you saw happening to Moses, everything you saw happening to Paul should be normal. He wants to live and dwell inside of you. In fact, Jeremiah 31, 31 says a new covenant is coming, not according to the covenant I made with the house of Israel and Judah, which they violated, but this is the covenant that I will make. I will put my word inside of you. His word became flesh. His name is Yeshua, Jesus. I will remember your sins no more, and you will know me. Repeat this prayer quickly after me, out loud. Dear God, Dear God I've made many mistakes, made many mistakes for, which for which I'm so sorry. I believe your blood, believe your blood. will allow me to know you will allow me to be forgiven of all of my sins. And your word, you will dwell within me. I make you my Messiah and Lord. Amen. Well, for all of you that are just joining us online, as well as the studio audience, I'm just going to share this real quickly. Uh, just one truth that the Lord has shown me and a practice to be delivered of demonic oppression. And, you know, demonic oppression is something that we all have dealt with at some point in time in our life. And for me, it actually lasted for a solid year where demonic spirits would come in my home, manifest in my home, sometimes in human form. I had this one particular spirit that would manifest as a female and look just like Xena, a warrior princess. It wasn't that person, but it, that's what the spirit looked like. And it was a sexual perversion spirit coming against me. And the other spirits would manifest a lot of times in a black cloud. They would hover over me and that would, it would cause my physical body to be paralyzed for several hours. I couldn't even open my mouth. I couldn't even speak. But when I could open my mouth and to speak Jesus, it would lift. But this went on for a solid year, and I was just seeking the Lord for a breakthrough, seeking the Lord for some way to overcome this, you know. And one night, I get ready to go to sleep, and the Lord told me, stay awake tonight and wait for the demons to manifest, and I'm going to show you what to do. 
And so I did. I was waiting till about three o'clock in the morning. And sure enough, the, the black cloud began to form right there in my, in my bedroom. And when the cloud formed, I had this random thought, go to your living room, grab a chair, bring it to your bedroom and put it before the demons and then tell them to watch you worship Jesus. And so that's what I did. I ran into the living room real quick, grabbed the chair, came back and I said, now you're going to sit here. You're going to watch me worship Jesus. And then I turned my back on the enemy. And what I learned from that is that what gives Satan's presence purpose and power is our attention. In other words, Satan is only interested in people he can influence. And when he manifests in your home, if all of your attention goes to him, you're minimizing your, your, your answer, Christ. And you're, and you're exalting in a sense. You know, I may say it a different way. What you magnify, you glorify. Without even realizing it, when you give attention to Satan, you begin to magnify his presence and glorify his presence. And that's what empowers him. And so when I turn my back, I'm literally saying this, I'm no longer going to give you attention any longer. I'm going to put my attention on the proper person. That is the person of Jesus Christ. And when I did, I began to worship Lord. And this is how I began. Father, I just come before you. You are my king. You are my Lord. And I close my eyes to begin with. You are my king. You are my Lord. You are my redeemer. You are my healer. And I just begin to proclaim the goodness and the nature of Christ. Amen. And I just begin to exalt Jesus with everything that I was in that moment. And, and when you do this, and when I was doing it in the moment, I could literally feel the environment and the atmosphere in my home beginning to shift because what you worship, you create an environment of. What you worship, you create an environment of. I want you to remember that. And so I'm exalting Jesus and I'm magnifying Jesus. So, Lord Jesus, you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the Redeemer. You are the Comforter. You are the Healer. You are the one that set me free. You are the one that empowers me by your Spirit. You are righteous and you are holy. Your Word says you will never leave me nor forsake me. You are with me at all times. Every moment that I need you, I can lean into your strength. I can lean into your purpose. Can you feel a shift in the atmosphere just by doing that? Even all of you that are watching online right now, right where you are, I just want you to begin to close your eyes. I want you to minimize the problems in your life. Stop putting focus on them. Stop putting attention on the enemy or what's going on in your life around you. Not that, they, not that you're ignoring it. It's that now you're putting attention on the person that can provide a solution and not the problem. And begin to magnify him. Matter of fact, right now in this room, in the studio, I want you as well to close your eyes. I just want you to close your eyes. And I just want you to, let, to allow it to begin in your heart, just this adoration, this adoration of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you begin to feel the inside of your heart shifting with gratitude, with gratefulness. I want you to begin to vocalize what you, what you sense and what you feel. And for all of you that are watching right now online, I want you to do the same thing. Close your eyes and right there in your own home, as the Lord begins to lead you, as the Lord begins to stir up your heart, I want you to begin to vocalize what you want to decree about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I promise you there will begin to be a shift in the atmosphere of your home. I'm just going to take a moment. I'm going to join you right now. My wife is going to join as well right here. Babe, would you mind just kind of leading with a song? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain. Everyone begin to join with a song chain. right now in the studio as well as online. There is power in the name of Jesus <laughs> to break, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Lord. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's no demon that can stand in the presence of a king, Jesus. <laughs> and now I want you to begin to pay attention as, as this begins to happen, as we're going to go into the song again, but, but can you feel the shifting in the room? Can you feel the shifting in the atmosphere? Hey! Right now, you're going to begin to feel and sense your emotions being recalibrated. Some of you may have came with fear or anxiety or depression, but that's going to be lifted. For you that are watching online right now, I promise you, something is shifting in your home. Begin to worship. Let's go back into that again. Lead us one more time. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Right now, cancer's falling. Hey, shoo, shoo. Hey, shoo. We curse cancer to its core. It's broken by the authority of Christ. In Jesus' name. In I, I Jesus' just, name. I just feel a stirring in my heart right now. Somebody in here, in the studio right now, you, or as well as at home, there's a bubbling up inside of you that's happening right now. Well, you need to stand. And you need to begin to vocalize the goodness of God. You need to begin to vocalize what's happening on the inside, whether that's a proclamation of His goodness or His power, whatever that is, begin to vocalize it right now. Hey! Show. Begin to vocalize it, family. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will <laughs> rejoice. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, I will rejoice Whoa. and be glad <laughs> in it. Hallelujah. This day, this very day is the favor of the Lord. Thank you for the favor of the Lord, favors and fair. I receive your favor, Father. <laughs> <laughs> you feel the shifting, family? You feel the shifting? You see, when the Holy Spirit comes and we create an atmosphere of His presence is welcomed, it, it comes and it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds. Somebody else, there's something. Somebody else stand up, begin to vocalize right now. I thank you, Father God, for being with me. I thank you for guiding me here today. I thank you for all that you've done for me, Father God. I just, I thank you for all your gifts and all your, um, all your faith that you have done for me. I thank you, Father God. I thank you. Amen. Now, I want you to pay attention to this right here. As this atmosphere is being created, a lot more is taking place than what we realize. Matter of fact, as we were worshiping, my right hand kept having heat come all over that. Is there anybody here in the studio that you had heat on your hand? Do you mind coming right up here? I want to pray for you. God is activating a gift in your hand. Specifically, I feel like it's related to healing. Anybody else have that, that heat in their right hand? There's two people here I see. If I could have a couple of catchers, that would be amazing. Just stand right here where the carpet is. Just put the edge of your feet right here on the carpet. That would be perfect. Well, the Holy Spirit is all over you, young lady. The Holy Spirit is all over you. And all of us, generally what I do at home is I continue to worship and I continue to magnify, but I'm stopping right now to kind of give some teaching points throughout this to show you a lot more has taken place. And so, Holy Spirit, I bless what you're doing over these two young ladies, Lord. I thank you that you're activating things inside of them right now. I thank you, Lord, that you're activating things right now. There it is. Just fill them up to overflow it. Fill them up to overflow it. There it is. Increase. Yes. More. For you that are watching online, you may have heard that my, my wife shout just then. That shout is that gift that the Lord has activated with her. And when that shout takes place, we've seen healings, we've seen deliverance, we've seen people catapulted into ministry. Well, we believe that's what's happening right now. Shh. There it is. <laughs> Fire of God, come over this young man. More Holy Spirit. More Holy Spirit. Whoa! Lord, I bless what you're doing with this young man. Fill him up to overflowing. Right now, I just keep having this pain that's on the right side of my back, going down on the right side of my hip. Who is that? Who is that? Is there somebody here? You have pain on the right side of your back that goes down into your hip. Is there anybody here with that? Could be online. 
Is that, is that you? Just go ahead and stand to your feet. I want you to lean forward and test it out. I speak to that pain. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Now stand back up. How does it feel? Is the pain gone? Yes. What's that? Yes. Screaming out so I can hear you. Yes. It's gone. It's gone. You see, family? When you begin to magnify Christ in the room, every provision, every solution that you need comes into the atmosphere. And all of a sudden, whatever the demonic has come against you with, it begins to dissipate. Why? You're magnifying the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're giving proper attention to Him. You see how it builds? For you that are watching online right now, I don't want you to feel disengaged to what's taking place. And I believe there's someone, you, you, you've you been watching this and you're sitting on your couch right now and you're saying, Lord, I, I want to feel your presence. I want you to close your eyes right now. Holy Spirit, come upon that, that person. I believe it's a gentleman. Come upon that young man right now and fill him with your glory and your presence and your power. Matter of fact, I just ask that there be an activation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in your life. For you that are also watching online, I want you to begin to prophesy over your home, begin to decree into the atmosphere. Whatever the lie the enemy come against you with, begin to proclaim the opposite of it. That's the reason he comes against you with those lies. Matter of fact, all of us here in the studio as well, begin to vocalize that, just stand to your feet. As you feel that, stand to your feet and vocalize. <laughs> More Holy Spirit. <laughs> you two, come up here. You two, come up here. Right here, brother. You two as well, come up here. The Holy Spirit is all over you guys. The Holy Spirit is all over you. Lord, I just bless the joy. I just bless the joy. I bless the joy. It's just, who is, who is he in relation to you, young lady? You don't know him? Will you come beside him anyway? God saw you two standing there. Lord, I just bless the joy right now. Bless the joy, Jesus, over you. That's what he means. Joy, joy, joy. Hey! Come. There it is. There it is. Hey! Fire God come. Fire God come. There it is. Hey! 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 Fire God come. There it is. There's a breaker anointing that's coming over you right now. Yeah, yeah. There's been places in your life where the enemy has come with a, a great amount of resistance, but I hear the Lord saying, now is the time for breakthrough. And the breaker anointing is upon you. The fire of God come. There it is. 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 Fire of God comes. Fill him up. Fill him up. Fill him up. There it is. More. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, family, God is doing more than what we realize. My encouragement to you in this is don't get distracted by what the Lord is when he starts touching somebody else and you miss your encounter or experience. I believe God is still healing people. Matter of fact, if you need healing in your body, just stand up, begin to test it out. Even if it's something you cannot test. I prayed for this gentleman. He had a brain tumor. There's no way to really test that. I just had him move his head. He went to the doctor. The tumor was gone. So I didn't just begin to move your body around. Just begin to move. You'll notice some of you are being touched and healed right now. Let me just see. A, let me just see a quick hand. If you could tell a difference in your body just by testing it out. This young man right here. What's going on? My feet. My feet been numb. Uh, they've been numb for the past couple of days. Okay. And as I'm speaking right now, it's leaving. The numbness is leaving. So, so your feet has been numb for yeah. the past couple of days, yeah. and right now it's leaving. It's leaving. Completely like it's, leaving. Like completely leaving. Wow, come on. That's <laughs> amazing, brother. Let's give Jesus praise in here. You, sir, what was going on with you? I was diagnosed, uh, I saw it today, a tumor wider than my kidney, on my kidney, and uh, they think it's cancer, and uh, I'm trusting God, and I came here 
And do, do you I feel something happening in that feel area? Anything at all? Okay, you just have faith that you're receiving. Absolutely, absolutely. Anybody else you can feel or sense something in your body as you stood up and tested it out? Matter of fact, if anybody is watching right now, if you are receiving some kind of healing, you just stand up as well, begin to test yourself out. And if you are healed, let us know somehow. Send in this testimony. We want to know what the Lord is doing. Now, just for a moment, you may be asking, well, why am I doing all of this? I'm trying to teach you throughout this process of what really takes place when the glory of the Lord, the presence of the Lord comes into the room. It's more than just us magnifying His presence. When Jesus manifests Himself, listen, His Spirit is always present, but it's not always manifest. And when you magnify Him, it becomes manifest. Yes. And everything that Jesus is, is manifested in the room. Everything. He's not a partial God. If you want to walk in healing, you want to walk in freedom, you want to walk in wholeness. Man, I've laughed the demon and devil out of my house so many times. I don't even know what the devil looks like. The only part of him I see is his backside when he runs out the door when I walk in. You see, when you begin to worship Jesus, you realize the devil, he's not some roaring lion. He's a little bit of kitty cat. Poor Mr. Devil got beat, defeated on the cross. All of a sudden, when you realize who Jesus is through the magnification of him, let's just go back into it. Babe, will you lead us back into a place of worship? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Jesus, Woo. break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Hey! Hallelujah. Hey! Hallelujah. That shame that stood in your eye and told you you're not. And God says you are. You're somebody. You're an I am. You're created in his image and in his likeness. And there is no shame because he bore your shame. Come on. Come on. I sustain this place of worship. In essence, who you're worshiping is who you give all of your attention to. feel a shift in the room? Yeah. And also I need mobility. Can anybody sense how it builds and builds and builds? A lot of times we wonder, how can I carry a greater expression of the presence of Christ outside of my home by cultivating His presence within your home? We just wanted to give a quick demonstration of how easy it is to really create an atmosphere of the presence of Christ. It's not difficult. It's not something that's gonna take us years and years and years. It just takes a moment of our time of giving our attention. 
<sighs> to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. <sighs> Just falling so madly and radically in love with him. Nothing else matters. See, until you, you lived a life that I lived and done the things that I've done and met the Jesus that I've met, you may not understand what I'm talking about, but oh, when you meet him, it will wreck you. You have something? I do have, I have a word for the body of Christ. Um, on uh, May 28th of 2019, the angel of the Lord came to my bedside and said, get ready, get ready. I'm coming, I'm coming like a mighty wave of my glory. And I feel like it's that time in that season that it's for us to be get, get ready for this next season, for this awakening that's coming, that we need to be ready as the body of Christ to bring in the harvest. We need to be ready spiritually. We need to be ready with our body. Are we healthy to sustain? So family of God, get ready for this wave of awakening that's coming. In Jesus mighty name, listen family, my wife and I have enjoyed being here today thank you guys for sacrificing your time to come for you that are watching thank you for sacrificing your time to to join us on this extended uh, segment here and be a participant in what we're doing my encouragement to every single one of you this isn't just a one-time thing this is something that you can practice and do on a daily basis this is something that you can create within your home a home of peace and joy instead of chaos Love you guys. Bless you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.